Here's the thing that once you see it, you can't unsee. Doing this activity is the lowest risk stakes thing you can do to help yourself in business. And it seems like why would watching a TV show or a movie have anything to do with my business? But you are a human and you engage in all kinds of activities in your life every day. And this is one of those things where you are in total control, it's safe, and it's really easy to do. everybody welcome back to a fresh episode this week you're helping me test out a whole new camera so we're gonna try this out today's topic is another podcast behind the scenes episode and what I'm super excited for this episode is to help you get into participating inside of the podcast as an active listener. I have a tagline that I'm using to help us kick off this first season. I don't know if it will persist, but we're going to start using it because I feel like it's really, really important. And it goes like this. Don't be boring, do business better. What I've noticed is that while a lot of us are going back into our conferences and our communities and gatherings, there's still a really huge population of the entrepreneurial community that's hermiting at home. And listen, I love being at home. I am like an A++ hermit. I'm so good at it. I feel like I invented it sometimes. But business is about people. And that means that we have to learn how to re-people again. We have to learn how to go back out there and talk with people and get comfortable doing it. My secret to this is that you don't have to engage in what we typically call small talk. As a fellow introvert, I hate small talk also. I like to go really deep on deep conversation topics very quickly. And the tip I have for you this week is going to help you do that. And the podcast is going to help you get there. Over the years, I've seen some coaches give truly truly bad advice when it comes to networking and relating to your audiences, showing up on social media. And it involves this sort of bad date training where you stockpile a limited amount of conversation topics that you can remember that help you get started so you're not like a deer in headlights when you're standing in front of a bunch of people. But what I think is it actually adds a ton more pressure to you. It's not natural. And after a while, those topics run thin very, very quickly. And let's be honest, no one wants to talk like this. It's weird. <laughs> Nobody goes on a second date with somebody who's very wooden and only has like five things they know how to talk about. And the same thing's true in business. When we're limited to the things that we can talk about in business, the conversation gets dull really, really fast. So that human part, that peopling part, the human to human part, where we actually meet our audiences where they're at, they get to know, like, and trust us, and then they're more likely to actually buy our service or product from us. That is missing when we miss this really key lesson this week. I'll just tell you, all the charisma in the world is not going to help you when you have a tired set list of topics and especially if you've groomed them and over groomed them to the point where all it's doing is leading other people into hearing your latest sales pitch. That is not what we want to do. The real truth is that when we talk about meeting our audiences where they're at, we're talking about the fun stuff. So let's talk about the fun stuff this week. I have a super simple formula for this. It's so obvious that once you see it, you can't unsee it. But before we get started today, I'm going to encourage you to hit the thumbs up like button on this video. Video. It helps other people find this content and if you're really enjoying it and you'd like other people to enjoy it as well You can also share it with a friend sharing is always caring This will help you and your friends get out there and become masters of meeting new people and actually develop meaningful relationships so this podcast was born out of serving my clients. It really was. I wrote movie and TV analogies for almost three years through a weekly newsletter that started during COVID and it just kept on going and then eventually got kind of tired of writing those and it became this podcast that's launching. 
As somebody who's a super big TV and movie nut and having worked in the entertainment industry early on in my career, one of the things that I think is real important is how we engage with the world around us. It gives us a lot of data about ourselves as entrepreneurs, and it also gives us a lot of data about our audiences and tells us where they're at at this particular time. When I see people struggling to relate to their audiences right now, it's usually rooted in a lot of systems things that I have coached people through, and there are some real things that people have told me and we're just going to go through a quick list you might recognize some of them for yourself the first one is i don't want to invest the money in that coach or the program or the service because i don't know if i'm going to get the return on investment or the value that i expect from it and this is a super valid one you know when we part with our money it is a real resource and it is finite for most of us and we really don't want to waste those resources so we want to apply them in a really smart way we don't just buy things willy-nilly but the thing is we really want to think about this in terms of that roi factor that return on investment Last week I talked about it in my video on luxury choices and we talked about how return on investment is more of a mindset shift where you shift away from thinking about how much money you spent and you start thinking about what am I going to gain? What did I gain from this? And when we're talking about doing a pattern interrupt by using fun things, we're really looking at a big investment pieces like when we invest in coaching or programs. As a systems coach, a real common one that I've heard, it may not be as high on your list as a coach, but it's usually along the lines of I don't want to upgrade that hardware or software because it's going to take me time and money and energy. And what if I don't know how to use it and then I'll feel stupid and then I don't know what to do with it. And it's going to take me longer to get back up and running again. So I'm just going to stick with the thing that's half broken. And then the third one is real juicy because we all have to offer something at some point that's for sale. So I'll hear people say, well, I don't want to offer that right now. What if no one buys it? What if no one likes it? What if I can't fulfill on it? What if they get in there and they hate it and then I feel stupid and they feel stupid and it's just this really ugly downward spiral of a thought pattern. This fourth one has been coming up a lot lately. If you've been watching any of the monthly energy reports on this channel, you know exactly what I'm talking with, with this peopling equation that's been coming up. And this fourth theme is centered around like, I don't want to go to that conference or that meetup or go meet those people in person. Because what if I don't like them? What if I'm not comfortable? What if I want to leave early? What if it's weird? And those are really valid feelings, but we're going to get into that this week as well. The next one, the fifth one is an offshoot of the previous one. And it's, well, I don't want to go to the online meeting because what if they make me turn on my camera? What if I'm like the only one in the room? What if they call on me? What if I'm not prepared? What if I just, you know, wanted to lurk in the background and just kind of continue to be passive and not actually participate? And then I'm going to round out our list with a final topic that is super common and it has to do with marketing. People don't want to be on social media. I'll hear people say, well, I don't want to do that because then it's another thing that I have to keep up with. I don't know how to show up on there. I'm not comfortable being seen. That just seems really hard. I'm going to be tethered to it. I'm going to have to be on there all the time. And there's just sort of this overwhelming feeling of having to be in service of something that isn't of your choosing. The list here, it goes on and on. I could probably come up with six more examples of very common things that I hear, but those have probably got to be the most common ones that I come across as a coach. If you're also a coach or a service provider, you might have other ones on your list that you're starting to think about as you watch this. And those would also be very, very true and valid right now. But let's Let's talk about the common denominator through all of this. The common denominator is a fear. Everything in business really actually boils down to mindset. In our metaphysical world, which I love incorporating into our business world, we can also talk about it as like intentions or manifestation practice, but really it's mindset. It's neuroscience. And in plain human terms, it's the fear of trying new things. So this is my favorite hack. My favorite hack is something you've probably already figured out. If you've been following me for any period of time, you know that I love my TV shows and my movies. The hack is this. I'll have a playlist of things that I might want to watch. And some of those things are things I would normally sit down and click play any old time. I've also got my favorites that I love to rewatch, but when I need to introduce a pattern interrupt into my world, if I'm feeling any of those things from that list that we talked about, I know that I need to pattern interrupt my own internal spiraling thoughts so that I can get myself out of that rut 
and the way I do it is by watching something I normally wouldn't watch. Here's the thing that once you see it, you can't unsee. Doing this activity is the lowest risk stakes thing you can do to help yourself in business. And it seems like why would watching a TV show or a movie have anything to do with my business? But you are a human and you engage in all kinds of activities in your life every day. And this is one of those things where you are in total control, it's safe, and it's really easy to do. It helps you break out of the inertia pattern that's stopping you from taking a fresh action. Because it's a passive activity, it's still safe. You're not putting yourself into a situation where you physically might be feeling like you're in danger, even if you're not. It also gives you something to reflect on and think about. So you can get out your journal and you can reflect on what emotions came up for you, what thoughts came up for you, what did you like? What did you have a strong reaction to? What felt kind of, you know, meh, I'm kind of bored. What, where is that all coming from? It helps you give you data about yourself. And the thing that makes it so low risk is that if you truly hate it, and I'm saying hate is a really strong term, so you have to really, really not like something to do this. But if you really don't like it, you can just stop watching. The things that I like to use TV shows and movies for is to ask myself some critical questions. As you consume your TV shows and movies, you can get some really good data on how you're interacting with the world. For example, you can ask yourself like, do I finish things? Like, do I finish series or do I just sort of like drop them halfway through? Another common question to ask yourself is, do you repeatedly watch the same things again and again? We call them comfort shows or comfort movies. There's a whole lot of neuroscience behind the reasons why we do things like this. You might even reread the same books again and again and again but when you need a fresh perspective on the world because the world is shifting and changing around you and you constantly go back to the same things that you know and love you have to ask yourself what is it doing for you in this season are you able to get new perspectives or are you just going back to the one that you are comfortable with because that's the one that feels safe and you've anchored yourself there. And then just in general, do you participate in the world around you? Do you know what people are talking about? There's always usually one TV show or movie that people are really, really excited about at any given time. It's part of the zeitgeist. It's what people are talking about. And if you don't know what they're talking about, you've never experienced it, you've never engaged with it, even if you don't like it, then it's really hard to relate to other people and engage with them in any meaningful conversation. The way that we get to know each other is through what's called water cooler chat. So if you still go to a regular office or if you're like me back in the day when you did, you know that people gather in the kitchen spaces and around their cubicles and offices and they'll talk about everything from sports to books to TV to movies to whatever's going on in the world, sometimes current events. But the thing that people really bond over are TV shows, and movies. So here's the invitation this week. If you want to try this and give yourself a really good pattern interrupt for the fourth quarter, you can join us by watching the show alongside me and my guests for the first season of the School of Moxie podcast. We watched the first season of the HBO original series, The Last of Us. There's also a video game of the same name and the series is based off the video game. Now here's the thing. You don't have to normally watch a show like this. In fact, I would say more than half of the guests and you'll hear them say it on the mic multiple times. They'll say that they normally would never have picked up a TV show like this, but now they're so glad that they did because they can't stop thinking about how they relate to the world as well. I even had a couple of guests, and you'll hear them also say it on the mic, where their experience with the show was kind of like, yeah, it was like entertaining, but like, mm -hmm. and that's in stark contrast to the majority of the guests and other people in the world who went bananas for this show. So it just goes to show you that you don't have to like everything. You don't have to agree with everything, but having something really rich in data that gives you good food for thought can really be the difference this season that helps you relate better to your audiences while they're also navigating a lot of really dramatic changes that are happening in our entrepreneurial community right now. What I recommend is if you wanna get started now, start watching the show so that way when when we dive into the topics, you won't have to worry about dodging around spoilers and you'll be all caught up and ready to participate in the conversation.
conversation while I'm also talking about it with my guests. You're gonna have fun while you do it. And also you're gonna have something new that you can think about. You're gonna discover it starts opening up new thought pathways. And as my guests demonstrate for you how they talk about their businesses by having us use a unified base of a TV show to talk about complex topics, you're gonna find out that you also have a lot of similar related experiences. It's going to help you recalibrate your feelings and your reactions to complex topics that we deal with in business. Everything from like community development to carving out safe spaces for ourselves in this world, navigating changes that are out of our control. And we even get into the production side of things like fame and celebrity and being seen and noticed in this world. It's super low stakes. It's just a TV show. Here's the thing, when you're confident about your ability to finish a show and carry on a conversation about the complex topics involved in it, rather than just mindlessly binge watching another series, you're gonna notice the difference in your business as well. You're going to end up making decisions differently. It happens pretty quickly. My guests talk about this on the mic. It happened to all of them as well. And the reason is because it helps you connect with other humans on a much more human to human level. And it makes you stand out from all the other people around you because all they've done is practice their super boring sentence about who they serve and what they offer and nobody's paying attention. Come do business better with me. We're not boring around here. And tune in for the first episode premiering on Monday, August 28th for the School of Moxie podcast. I will see you over on the airwaves. And in the meantime, I'm gonna encourage you one more time to click the thumbs up like button if you found this super helpful. Remember to share it with a friend, especially if you guys are gonna watch the show together. That would be super fun to do together. And also click the subscribe button so that you both get all the notifications when I post new content on here. I'm gonna continue posting behind the scenes content. I will also post information about the podcast as well as continued business discussions and all of our usual monthly energy reports and all of the good things we do here on this channel. Until next time, remember to be sensible, be woo, and most of all, be you.